Scrapping these metal giants is an intense process. After the engines and all valuable components have been removed, the gutted fuselage is transferred to the scrappers area for the final phase. From this point on, the airplane's existence is determined entirely by the scrappers' schedule. Cutting up an airplane is a hazardous job and safety is of the utmost importance. To avoid igniting any liquid flammables that may have settled in the fuel tanks or hydraulic lines, welding torches are rarely used in disassembly. Keeping a good distance from the plane increases safety. That's why scrappers do most of their work with heavy equipment. An excavator is a typical piece of equipment used to chop up airplanes. More commonly found on construction sites, they are the perfect tool for the scrappers. This excavator has a grappler on the end of its working arm, resembling a T-Rex. Its claw is used to rip and tear at an airplane and transport the pieces to a nearby dumpster. Jim Schwartzhoff is an excavator operator who specializes in scrapping aircraft. It's a job, you know. <laughs> and every scrapper has a favorite part of their job. I like cutting them. And the machine Jim likes to cut with is this hydraulic excavator. It has a rotating head equipped with a 27-inch shear that produces nearly 700 tons of cutting pressure. Strong enough to bite through a 17-inch steel I-beam, this monster machine can bully around any size airplane. It rips. It tears. It crushes. And it transports. But when the scrappers do need to get up close, they bring in the heavy-duty saws. Discovering the best equipment for scrapping has been a process of trial and error. Paul, oh, yeah, you get better each time. In the early days of scrapping aircraft, they used, uh, they started out with skill saws with metal cutting blades. Then they got into torches which is uh, fine, but you don't cut aluminum, you melt it, it takes a lot of time. And they, be, they got the gas saws in, they look like a big giant chainsaw with a, with a grinding wheel on it, cutting disc. Eventually they got into using heavy equipment with like a, a 225 cat with a 40R shear, like, uh, which is like a big set of scissors to cut it up. And then you've cut the time down from normally where it would take three, four weeks just to cut a plane up. You can cut a plane up in about two days, pack it in boxes, and move it off the uh, premises. David Kramer is the president of Alameda Metals, an aircraft recycling center based in Lancaster, California. He operates one of the scrapping yards at Mojave Airport, where airplanes are dismantled for their reusable metals. We generally start with the interior, and uh, we try to remove all the non-recyclable materials, you know, such as uh, uh, the plastic walls and ceilings and luggage bins, uh, carpet, the seats, anything that is non-metallic will be removed generally. So what do you got going on there? Okay, I'm going on the left side of the plane. I'm dropping the PSUs, getting ready for shipment. And PSUs are what now? Passenger service modules, that supplies oxygen, they're canisters that gives you the air to breathe in emergency. Then we work our way to the outside of the airplane.
because the wings are bulky, we'll generally cut the wings off first. Then just continue to cut, we'll usually cut the cockpit off next and just work our way back down on the plane. Oh, I think it's great out here watching them crush these things up. We watched them take the nose off. It took about eight minutes for them to get the nose off of that uh, jet over there. Pretty good, pretty impressive. The flow of aircraft, it varies per make and model. If we have smaller narrow body aircraft, we're able to process those aircraft typically within a week or less. The larger aircraft, such as L-1011s or 747s, the wide body aircraft, they can take up to three weeks to process. The wide body aircraft are obviously much bigger, uh, harder to deal with, and the interiors are more complicated. They have a lot more material that we need to remove. Each aircraft depends upon its configuration and how we receive it. The configuration of the aircraft depends upon the prior owner. If the aircraft was used in a cargo configuration, the aircraft arrives to us in a very clean state. That is, there's no interior inside of it. If, however, the aircraft was used in passenger service, then there are seats, there are carpets, there are walls to be taken out, and that can be very time consuming. This is the harsh reality of aircraft scrapping. But now and again, on its way to the scrapper's yard, an airplane may be diverted temporarily to perform one more role. Since airplanes have always captured our imagination, it's no surprise that they would be a big hit on the silver screen.